most of the time you won't have to master them that often because you're not going to get out of calibration. The reason I have to master them is because every fall we come in and we erase the memory and I reload the operating system so they're, they're fresh for you guys. Um, when the robots come from the factory, they come with a sheet. And this sheet is, if you've got this, is important because you've got your master counts that are calibrated from the factory very precisely. And uh, when you calibrate with these, it's right on the money every time. This is a precise calibration, and when you use the witness marks, that's more of a rough calibration. This will be very precise if you have this information, and you should have it with the robot. Um, this one's a little bit different. Um, what you have to do first is get into your system, uh, which is on your main menus here, and you've got quick menus and, and uh, a full menu. You have to be in the full menu to be able to get to your system, okay? Once you got to your system, you got to hit this F1, which gives you another menu. Yeah. Okay. So once you're in your system, which is six, right, you have to go down to variables, okay? Once you're in variables, which is two, all right, you have to find which is called master enable, right? And usually it's zero, which means it's off. So you have to put a one in there to, to enable the mastering. Once you've done that, uh, just by hitting enter, and then one, and it puts it that, and enter again, and you're set, okay? Now if I go back to this F1, I've got an extra master cal in there now. And that's where you want to go to, to calibrate these things. So I go down there and I hit enter. So now we've got fixture position master. We've got um, zero position master, which is the one you want to do this. Okay, because that's zero. Um, you've got quick master, which is basically the witness marks. And single master, access master, so you can do one access at a time if you need be. Um, quick master reference and then calibrate are the ones you got in there. So what you do is pick the one you want and then just follow the, uh, go through the, uh, it basically walks you through. So, and that's about all there is to it. Then you have to go back in and, and say master has been enabled, uh, uh, turn it to off and mastering done. And that's about it. So, uh, documentation. I even do it once a year, but I still have to follow this because I can never remember all the, the, the paths to the, um, the menus. So if you've got documentation, use it. Don't try to do it by memory. And if you happen to be able to do the documentation, make it clear and concise so that somebody else after you can follow it. Very important, you know. And again, stuff in the factory to keep that stuff, especially new ones because it's got all your information on these robots. These are nice because we can do the mastering on them in-house. The adepts, we can't because it takes special software and special jigs and fixtures to be able to master those. You have to go to school to get that. And we haven't done that yet. So we have to call somebody in. If those go out, we have to call somebody in to have those mastered. So one of the things you just learned as you as engineers, you may be in charge of buying the robot, okay? One of the questions you want to ask that you might not normally think about asking is, okay, you know, how do I recalibrate these, this machine that you're trying to sell me? Am I going to be able to do it with just a, a mastering sheet? Or do I have to have a special program and special fixtures to do it? That may make a difference on whose brand you buy, depending on, on what you're doing. Because you might say, well, I've got a small shop, I've only got one of these, I'm not going to spend all that money for the program and the fixturing, okay? But now if you're a big company and you've got, going to have 10, 12 of them, makes sense to stop by the program and the fixturing maybe and send somebody to the school for it. So all that makes a big difference in how you would go about doing that, that master calibration. One of the things you have to remember too, these are all have battery backup on them, right? You have to change those batteries about every five years. Okay? 
If those batteries go dead, you're going to have to remaster this. Okay, there's a set up here, and there's a set in the controller. On those, the adepts, if that battery goes dead, you lose that calibration, you have to call somebody in. If you disconnect the battery without the other one plugged in first, you lose your calibration. And you have to either you know, be able to do it yourself or have somebody come in and do it for you. So on the adepts, there is a parallel battery connection. One has a battery, one does not. You have to put the second battery in before you take the first battery out. So it's never without power. power. If you're buying a used robot, every used robot that I've seen on the market says may have to be calibrated. You should take that as will have to be calibrated because what's happened is the batteries are gone. They've had them unplugged for so long, sitting in the warehouse trying to sell them, these used ones, that the batteries are dead, the calibration is lost. And so again, you better ask them, do you have the master calibration data? And oftentimes they're not going to have that. Why? Because it's just a single piece of paper yeah. that you get, and it's like a lot of other stuff. Somebody had it that was a mechanic somewhere, someplace. They closed the factory down. That guy got laid off. You think he made sure that something was put in a nice little package say, make sure this goes with the robot? Okay? And so uh, that's why oftentimes used robots are very cheap compared to a new one. A, they've got a lot of wear on them. B, they're usually a problem because they're not calibrated and they're going to have to at least be calibrated at the, if you're at the most. If you have to replace a motor, you're going to have to recalibrate. If you break a gear in the gear train, you're going to have to recalibrate. So all those things you want. And by the way, if you replace the motor, then that master calibration sheet isn't worth anything anymore. Yeah. Okay? Exactly. Okay? You might get away with replacing a gear and being able to go back to the same master numbers because the motor, the resolution, because what that is, it's relating to the, to encoder. the uh, encoder on the, the servo. On the servo. So that's what these numbers are. They come from the encoder. So. Is that specific to each robot? This is specific to each robot. If you look at this one, it's got a, a Y number, a serial number, stuff like that. On the side here, it's all that. And so the F number is what I write up here so I know which one it is. And F number is registered with FANUC. So all these have F numbers on it. So you have to have it with the, the unit you know, so you know what, which one it goes to. So, and I kept all these when we got these robots, so that's why I have these. We didn't get them with the deltas. We got them donated. And so they didn't have all that stuff. So we have to do the witness marks when we do a calibration. And luckily enough, the witness mark calibration so far has been good enough for whatever yeah. we've been doing. It's close. Test to make sure you calibrate it right. Do you know anything? Or do you just know that it's calibrated? It's just, you just know it's calibrated. Okay. Yeah, because once you get it in and say calibrate and you put in the, you know, the uh, witness marks, you know it's at zero or close to zero. And you say it, it's been enabled and, and it's, the calibration is done. If you had a program that you know made the robot go to a certain position exactly, that's one way you can check it. That's exactly that's what Aaron did. did. Yeah, okay? that's what they did. He had a known program. Right. He knew he was supposed to be somewhere, and he wasn't. And so he just kept, he just recalibrated to the point where he actually got to that point when he ran that program. That's assuming the program was made with the correct calibration. Correct. 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 And that was probably done with an integrator. They probably got those units new. And so when they did that, it was already calibrated. So they wrote the program uh, from a calibrated unit. What probably happened with theirs is when he pulled out, there's, there's either... In these, there's belts, so I probably jumped a couple of cogs on a belt is what happened, and then they had to do the offset to compensate for that jump in the belt. They could probably go back and fix that by pulling it off and redoing it, but is it worth it? It's up to the, man, the uh, owners. Of course, first you have to figure out how many cogs, right. how many cogs did you jump, game. right? Yeah, it's a guessing game, yeah. yeah. These are full of grease, too. <laughs> so, um, and that's about it. Any questions?